Hello, this is Reed Hart with PECI, and let's talk about air economizer and ventilation requirements in the new code. Okay, again, we see our heating, ventilating, and air conditioning energy use graph. We've got outside air temperature along the bottom of the scale. We can see that when it's extremely hot or extremely cold, there is not a whole lot of energy use we do have significant energy use in the middle of the spectrum because we have a lot more hours when the temperature is moderate. In fact, between 50 and 65 degrees or so, we can take advantage of some significant savings by using outside air for cooling. In fact, as we look at the graph, we've taken a big chunk out of the cooling load, perhaps 30 to 50 percent, by using the outside air instead of the mechanical cooling when it is effective. In the new code, the economizer control integration exemptions that used to exist under 15 tons have been removed. There's an exception for data server rooms. Let's talk about what it means to be an integrated economizer. This diagram looks pretty complicated, and frankly, there are a lot of controls that need to be installed for an economizer to work properly. The biggest component of an economizer is having a large outside air damper, as well as having a return air damper that can close off the return air, forcing the return air out through an exhaust vent when we are using the outside air for free cooling. The outside air comes in, the cool outside air, when cooling is required, into the space and this keeps us from having to run our DX coil or mechanical cooling. In an integrated economizer it means we operate the outside air economizer partially in conjunction with our cooling coil. In a non-integrated situation this outside air would be cut off completely when we were above a certain temperature so that only mechanical cooling would be used. One thing that is important for smaller systems for an integrated economizer is to have a two-stage cooling stat or thermostat in the space. The first stage of cooling will operate the economizer when it's available. The second stage of cooling will operate the economizer and the mechanical cooling together and then when it gets too hot outside the changeover controls will cut off the economizer. Where can you find this out? Well first of all you can verify it in the sequence of operation or a commissioning report or you can verify it by noticing that there's a two-stage thermostat at the site. One thing that indicates that you do not have integrated economizer control is what's called a snap disk. This is usually located under the hood uh, or where the outside air comes into the unit. It's a small round silver disc. This typical snap disc operates at a fixed temperature of 55 degrees and with this type of control the unit is set up so that either it's the economizer or mechanical cooling but not both. This does not meet code and it's not compliant. It actually hasn't been compliant for quite some time, although these units continue to be installed because they are a lower cost item. The same controller can work with or without a snap disk. So it can work with the proper adjustable set point sensor, and there's a set point for the change over a hard limit. What this does is lock out the economizer when it gets too warm outside. We don't want to bring hot air into the building with the economizer. And this should typically be set at the C or between the B and C setting. It should not be set down at the D setting. That would be the same as a snap disk set at 55 degrees. This controller in many of the units is typically located on the motor that operates the linkage to the damper for the economizer itself. Demand controlled ventilation has a uh, significant change. Demand controlled ventilation was required in the prior code. 
but based on average system density. This typically meant that when you had one unit serving an area with a high density, say a classroom, a gymnasium, or a, a large auditorium or movie theater, you would have demand controlled ventilation required. This new requirement is by zone, not system. Under the old uh, code, if you had one zone on a large system, it would average out so that the density requirement was not triggered and demand controlled ventilation would not be required. In the new code, it's required by zone again, not by system. As a result, there are lower density thresholds in addition and many more areas are going to have demand control ventilation controls required. If we look at some of the numbers, the threshold in people per thousand square feet under the old code it was 50 people, now it's down to 25 people. So we're going to have areas that were across the borderline before now falling into a requirement. And again, because it's by zone, we do have some minimums on the zone. So 150 square feet on a multi-zone system and 500 square feet on a single zone system. And pretty much any unit that has an economizer will have this requirement. And um, if there's no economizer, it will have a requirement to have this type of control installed at 3000 CFM of outside airflow. One thing to note is that demand controlled ventilation can be controlled with the CO2 sensor, which senses the CO2 concentration in the room, which indirectly tells the number of people. But if the space is less than 750 square feet, it can use an occupancy sensor to turn the fan off or close the zone damper. This is a less expensive alternative that still provides good demand controlled ventilation. In a typical system, you might or might not have a variable frequency drive, depending upon the size, but you will always have an outside air damper that is controlled with a damper motor that is in turn controlled with a CO2 sensor in the space. So as the CO2 concentration rises because people are breathing in and out, it means it will open up the outside air damper to provide ventilation and meet ventilation requirements. However, when the space is empty and we have lower levels of CO2, then the outside air damper will be closed and we will save energy.